So you need to kind of take into account how much do I really need to be happy and can I live moderately for the rest of my life like that? Hey, what's going on everybody? This is the Blockchain Backer bringing you the latest cryptocurrency news and analysis. And today we're going to talk about how many XRP do I need to retire? It's a very common question. I see it all the time and I thought it would just be super simple to answer this, but it's not. It's super complicated, but I'm going to try to break it down as easy for you as possible. And it all starts with how much money do you need for retirement? First of all, let me lay this out there. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not investment advice. You need to consult a licensed financial advisor before figuring out any type of investment or making any type of investment decisions or figuring out your retirement. I'm just a YouTuber. Okay, cool. We've gotten past that. Now, I am sorry that this video is getting out so late today. I'm having a hard time adjusting after staying up so late for New Year's. I normally get to bed before 10 o'clock. I wake up at 530 every morning and I get going. But today I woke up at 9. My daughter stayed at her grandma's house last night, so it was really quiet in the house, and I just slept. Well, I guess maybe I just needed that sleep. I don't know. Now, in the second half of this video, I do actually kind of break it down. Like, if you had a million dollars and you paid yourself $50,000 per year, $60,000 per year, $70,000 per year, how long would it last you? Or if you had $2 million, or if you had $3 million, and we break it down based on how much you pay yourself per year, when would your money run out? So stick around to at least the second half of this video to if you just don't want to run these numbers on your own and you want to just kind of get a ballpark idea, I do break that down later in this video. This video is going to be very math heavy. So if you like math, great. If not, hey, I'll do some of it for you near the end. I also will tell you which targets I think are the most realistic. So it's kind of sprinkled throughout the video. So if you want to kind of catch those, just kind of listen and I'll tell you what I think is the most realistic. Let's dive into these numbers. This is a very hard question to answer unless you have some information on your own. The first thing you need to do is you need to write down how much money do you need for retirement? And that's going to require some calculations on your part, but I can try to help you do that. First of all, you need to say, how much money do I need every single year in retirement? Just because you get a million dollars does not mean you can just start spending money like crazy. It doesn't mean you can go out and buy a new house, buy a new car, and life is all grand and you're retired. No way. You have to take into consideration how much you have to take out of it every year and how much that will deplete your money. So if you get a million dollars and you pay yourself $50,000 per year and you take into account inflation, you know, the value of your dollar depleting for the next 30, 40, 50 years, well, your million's not going to last very long you're going to be done with it within like 15 years or so, 20, 30 years. I don't know. I, we'll have to run those numbers. But you need to take that into account. What does retirement look like for you? Now, for me, I do know about the law of diminishing returns on your happiness. Once you reach a certain level of income, you don't get much happier. I've experienced this in my own life. Whether you're getting $50,000 or $100,000 per year, there's not a huge jump in your happiness as long as you have some basic things like a house to live in, a car for transportation, healthcare, food, electricity, things like that. Those are the basics and those are what make up the bulk of your happiness in regards to financials. And of course, having a backup safety net of money in your account in case something goes wrong. But beyond that, going from 50,000 to 100,000, there's not a huge difference in your life. Going to 150 to 200, still not a huge difference. Difference. Yes, there is a difference between 50,000 and 250,000, but between 50 and 100 or 100 and 150, there's not this huge jump. So you need to kind of take into account how much do I really need to be happy and can I live moderately for the rest of my life like that? In the examples that I'm going to show you, we're going to assume that you can live off of $50,000 per year for the rest of your life. Now, you may think, I cannot live off $50,000 per year. Well, then that means that you're going to have to make adjustments to the figures that I'm going to show you. But I'm going to tell you how you can calculate them yourself so you can figure that out too. What we're going to assume is we're going to assume that in order to get $50,000 per year and fund that for the rest of your life, you need to get about $2 million. Also, something else to consider is how much federal income taxes you're going to pay on that $2 million. So if you've held your investment for less than one year, or if you're doing coin hopping, then that means you've probably held your XRP less than one year. And again, I'm not a tax advisor, but I believe that's going to be taxed at 35%. You're going to be paying short-term capital gains taxes on that $2 million. Whereas somebody who did 
a long hold, a hold that was longer than one year, will only pay about 15%, maybe 20% in long-term capital gains taxes. So in this mathematical calculation we're going to do, we're going to assume that you have held less than one year. If you've held longer than one year, that is fantastic. But if you've held less than one year, we've got to consider that 35% capital gains tax. Two million after being taxed at 35% only turns into 1.3 million. You will pay $700,000 in taxes on that two million. And here you go. I've got the Excel sheet for you right here. And we say we sell $2 million worth of XRP. And in your first retirement year, you start with 1.3 million. You take $50,000 of of income and then you invest your remaining so if you have 1.3 million you take 50,000 that leaves you with 1.25 million you invest it making a 6% return on your investment ending the year with 1.325 million so your invest so your total dollars grows we move on to the next year and we start with 1.325 million and then we have to take 51,250 the following year why do we do that well when i take into this calculation i like to think about inflation Inflation, right? Why are we even invested in cryptocurrency? Why do people like gold and silver? And it's because the value of the dollar is depleting, right? So in retirement, we have to take that into consideration too, that we have to pay ourselves more every single year in order to have the exact same purchasing power that we have today. So every year in this calculation, I've increased the amount by 2.5%. So the next year you take 51,250, invest the remaining amount, and you're left with 1.35% million and you can see we go through this over and over again and I'm gonna go ahead and click on these really fast and then you can start doing these calculations on your own just by um, pausing this video grabbing these calculations and typing them into Excel for yourself so here we go and there's the last one and then what I did here was I just dragged 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 simple as that so there's your calculations if we start with 1.3 million and we take it out. So the cool thing about what I've done here is that I can adjust this. I can change this number to negative 60,000 and it's going to adjust all of them for me. And $60,000 per year on 1.3 million does take me 37 years into retirement. For some people that may be enough, but what about $70,000 per year? 70,000 will only take you 28 years and then you are broke. So it's all up to you to figure out what you need, how much you need per year. After you have figured this out and you've figured out the amount of money that you need and you've calculated it with the taxes, then you can say, all right, we have a starting figure. I know that I need X amount of dollars in order to retire then the calculation gets super simple. It's just figuring out what price point you're going to sell at. Over here, I've created this little, small little calculation here, and right now the price is about 18, 19, 20 cents at the time of recording this video. So if we have a goal of getting to $2 million, and we're gonna have to pay taxes on that and get the 1.3 million. So if we have a goal of getting $2 million, and these are the different XRP prices, how many would we need to sell at that price point in order to get the million, the $2 million? And how much would we have to invest right now in order to get this number of XRP? Now, I've created a lot of different price targets, and you could take a look at my previous videos. It's just a few videos back from this one, and it's titled like something along the lines of is $500 plus a realistic target, or is it realistic to get to $500 and above? Take a look at that video because I've got all the different price targets lined out in there, and you can kind of pick which price targets you like. Again, not financial advice. It's just technical analysis of what I've done and what I see in my my plan for the blockchain backer. Now, one thing that has a lot of attention in the cryptocurrency community is this whole 589 price point or above $500. It's a very, very popular topic to talk about. And I've always wondered why is that price target so popular? You know, when I do technical analysis and I pick what price points I think are the most realistic, I'm gonna tell you the three that I think are the most realistic possible. That's $13, $26, and $55. 
Those are the most realistic. Getting anything beyond that to me is just the biggest gamble in the entire world. But why is the $500 plus target so popular? Why do so many people like that target? And I think I've probably figured it out. If we take a look at this calculation that I have right here, we can see that if we want to get to $2 million at $589 per XRP, you would need 3,396. Well, here is the rich list stats for the XRP wallets, and it shows how many XRP are held in how many wallets and up here we have you know nearly a billion xrp in a wallet and then we move our way down here is 800 700 to 800,000 per wallet and there's 212 wallets with that amount we come way down here and we start seeing the bigger numbers right anywhere between 25,000 and 50,000 there are 20,000 wallets with that much xrp and then we have 5,000 to 10,000 there's 44,000 wallets but then here's the big one 1,000 to 5,000 xrp is the biggest wallet of all, well, except for this one that has like 20. 20 to 500. But if you see how big this this number is here, this seems to be the golden zone. This 1,000 to 5,000 total number of XRP in a wallet seems to be the most popular number. If we head back over to our Excel sheet and we run the mathematical calculations, well, to get to $2 million, we need that 589 price and you'd have to sell 3,396. 3,396 resides right here in this zone. And this is the most popular wallet amount so i think it's the reason why that price point has gained so much popularity is because there are so many people with that size of a wallet that it would be a life-changing amount of money for people who have say 400,000 xrp in their wallet they do not need it to get to 500 plus in order to have a life-changing amount of money. $10 would do the trick. $10 would give them $4 million and they'd be on their way. But 500 plus satisfies the largest bucket of people to become rich. And I think that's why that number has so much popularity. Like I said, the price points that I think are the most realistic are $13, $26, and $55. I've done lots of technical analysis on those numbers. I am certain I will do more technical analysis on those numbers. When I think of the most realistic outcome, those are the targets. So when I'm thinking of my retirement and my plan and my exit strategy, those three numbers are key numbers for me. So in the end, when figuring out how many XRP do I need to retire, it comes down to figuring out how much money do you need or how much money do you need every single year and then that comes down to what is the bulk amount of dollars that you need to get from your xrp sale so when you sell it how much do you need to have in order to mathematically fund that there may be calculators out there on google and whatnot that will help you figure that stuff out i don't know but you saw the calculations that i have here in excel you can try to kind of figure that out yourself and right here real quick at the end of this video let me just go ahead and i'm going to change this number to 1 million because that seems to be like a key number that people would want to know about right so if you paid 35 percent sales if you paid 35 percent federal income tax on 1 million dollars that would leave you with 650,000 so let's put 650,000 dollars in there if you started with 650,000 and paid yourself 50,000 dollars per year you would run out of money after 16 years it's not a realistic retirement amount but what about if you had 40,000 dollars per year that would take you 22 years. What if you had 30,000 per year? That would take you 37 years. Again, by the time we get to the 37th year, you're paying yourself 72,976 in order to keep up with inflation. So it's $30,000 of today's dollars. And that does increase over time. And you would run out after 37 years. And then really fast, let me do 3 million just to make it super simple for everybody. 3 million, 3 million would leave you with 3 million would leave you with $1,950,000 after taxes. You would easily be able to pay yourself 50,000, easily be able to pay yourself 80,000, and $100,000 seems to be kind of the breaking point where it starts to fall apart down here in about 30 years. Obviously, let's just do 150 so you can see it. $150,000 per year would only get you to 16 years into retirement. So the golden zone seems to be about about $80,000 would last you 45 years. So $3 million, if you can live off of $80,000 per year, 3 million seems to be the golden zone. So you need to financially figure that out.
So hey guys, I know that this video was extremely math heavy and I hope that I didn't like overwhelm you a little bit. Some people might be disappointed by this, you know, it might, you might have had different expectations of, of what you were wanting and, and what is more realistic, but that's really kind of the approach that I bring to this channel. I do like to show a lot of the fun stuff and really the excitement that I bring for the big targets that I do see, but I also like to do it from a very data driven type of mindset. Always been that way. Nothing that I do is ever about having hey, we don't know what could happen. This could be something cool that we don't even know about. No, nothing is like that. Everything is always the measurements, the data, the mathematical calculations, and how do we get there? This is very math driven. I hope I didn't overwhelm you here. I know there's no technical analysis in this video, and most of my videos do have technical analysis. Please like this video too. Give me some support. I always appreciate it. Um, if you're not a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. You can get notified every time I create a new video. And as always, this is not investment advice and I'm not a financial advisor, but if you ever need a pick me up or a little bit of reassurance, just remember that the blockchain backers got your back. Have a good one.